Blake called for an interiorization, a reopening of what he called the worlds of eternity, which are the inner spiritual worlds, which in a materialist civilization or culture have been virtually denied and excluded. The reality of these worlds was to Blake beyond question. He calls upon us to reverse the premises of materialist thought and reaffirm man and as a spiritual being and the cosmos in which we live as a great spiritual universe. Blake challenged reason insofar as at the end of the 18th century in the materialist world into which we were entering upon, uh, reason had in fact uh, claimed uh, supremacy. In fact, reason was enthroned as a divinity in Notre Dame in Paris at the time of the French Revolution. There was a tremendous uh, human hubris, a dismissal of the true divinity within man, which in Blake's terms is the imagination. All the arts of life, they change to the arts of death in Albion. The hourglass, condemned because its simple workmanship was like the workmanship of the plowman, and the water wheel that raises water into cisterns, broken and burned with fire, because its workmanship was like the workmanship of the shepherd. And in their stead, intricate wheels invented, wheel without wheel to perplex youth in their outgoings and to bind to labors in Albion of day and night the myriads of eternity, that they may grind and polish brass and iron hour after hour, laborious task kept ignorant of its use, that they might spend the days of wisdom in sorrowful drudgery to obtain a scanty pittance of bread, in ignorance to view a small portion and think that all, and call it demonstration, blind to all the simple rules of life. One can call Blake a Gnostic in a general sense, not in a sectarian sense, because in fact he drew his system from many sources. But he was a Gnostic in the sense that it was based on exact knowledge of what one must call an excluded tradition. Blake held the view which has since become very widespread through the works of Jung that the structure of what one might call the human psyche uh, the inner universe was fourfold. There are, for Blake, the four zers, which correspond in a general way to Jung's four functions of reason, intuition, feeling, and sensation. And these four functions Blake has very marvelously personified in figures we all know, of whom the villain of Blake's uh, myth, so to say, is the figure of Eurizen, reason. Eurozen puts bounds to the universe. It is a bounded universe. It is measured. It is the universe of, of quantity, if you like, the reign of quantity. Length, breadth, height, uh, weight. It's the measurable universe. And it is bounded. It, he puts a circumference to the universe and one sees him in that very fine uh, late engraving of Blake of God creating the universe with a pair of compasses. He is bounding it. Whereas the universe of the imagination is unlimited and boundless. What is man? The sun's light, when he unfolds it, depends on the organ 
that beholds it. Blake, I think, understood that the only true revolution is an inner revolution in the inner transformation of the church of the New Jerusalem, which he himself celebrates in the poem which he calls Jerusalem. The city within the brain, if you like, of humanity is Jerusalem in the making. God isn't up there, you know, sitting in judgment, as it were, on a cloud with a long white beard, inventing awful rules so people feel guilty all the time, and so on and so on. That's somebody else, entirely. God is within. It's man who is without. Cosmic man. Now, if you don't understand that, don't worry, you're in good company. Besides, you'll get the point eventually. I mean, by the time you're dead, when your spirit will become so agile, you'll find that you can leap from star to star in a single stride. Oh, there are, of course, people who would dispute that. Mathematicians, philosophers, engineers like Arkwright, scientists like Newton. Isaac bloody Newton. Now, he's the most perfect symbol of that oppressive and ruthless spirit which is the governing force in our society and an embodiment of that cosmic spirit who holds our world in the direst subjugation and who with terrible laws oppresses us all and sticks us down and makes us know our bloody place. Many people worship this horrible emanation and call it God, a good God and a just one. They're wrong, of course, for if this good God were in fact just, as they suppose, the world that he created would be just too. The world isn't just. Society isn't just. Far from it. Blake was speaking to deaf ears in his own time, and his prophetic message is essentially one that calls for a reversal of the premises of the last 300 years or so of materialist civilization. Man is a spiritual being, and we inhabit a spiritual and living universe.